Hey guys, my name is Sarah. I'm camping in Cascade Locks, Oregon, and here's what I did by the Columbia River Gorge. I actually didn't plan on making a video about this place, but I am super excited to share this with you guys because I absolutely fell in love with this area when I got here. I've been to some super beautiful places, but this place is just so special. There is so much beauty here and I tried to capture it the best I could for you guys, but you just have to see it in person. This campsite was a total last minute reservation for me. I decided to treat myself to some electricity since I've been almost exclusively dry camping for the last month. I'm staying at the port of Cascade Locks. It's a fairly small campsite, but it's right on the water. So I finally got my waterfront view that I've been wanting. <laughs> it's a super well-maintained campground. There's plenty of things that you can walk to from here. Thunder Island is right across a little bridge here. It's a big fishing spot. There's a restaurant. You can take the Stern Wheeler right from here. It's like a five minute walk. And there's local markets, breweries, and restaurants that you can walk to as well. I will say it's a little bit loud because there is a big fishing spot right next to the campsite and it's right next to the train tracks. There's so many trains that constantly go by, but I honestly like it. It reminds me of the spot I was staying in California because it was next to a train track. Also, seeing the trains go right by the gorge is beautiful and it looks like something out of a storybook. I honestly did little to no research on this area before I came here, but after driving both east and west, I find that Cascade Locks is the most beautiful area of the gorge. The Bridge of the Gods is right here. It crosses right over to Washington. The Pacific Crest Trail passes through this town, which is super cool because I've also been to several other places recently that I had no idea the PCT crossed through. I went to Echo Lake right by South Lake Tahoe and coincidentally did a small portion of the PCT myself. And then I went to Crater Lake and lo and behold, there was the PCT again. And now I'm in Cascade Locks and I go to this brewery and there's things on the menu about trail magic. The first full day I was here, it was kind of gloomy. So I decided to actually drive over to Portland. I didn't do too much while I was there. So it's barely worth mentioning. I spent a lot of time in Washington Park though, which was gorgeous. I found a beautiful giant rose garden and I just drove throughout the park, which was super beautiful, and it didn't even feel like I was in the city. After that, I headed east and I hopped on the historic Columbia River Gorge Highway. It is an absolutely beautiful scenic drive and a must do if you ever come to this area. It's 75 miles, but I only did a small portion of it. I started right around Crown Point, which has Vista House on it. It's a museum. It's also a memorial for Oregon pioneers. There's a ton of really cool history in this area. And from that house, you can get an amazing panoramic view of the gorge. If you keep driving east from there, you're gonna cross a lot of waterfalls. Some of them are right off the highway. I did the Lateral Falls hike. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I believe it's only a couple miles. It only takes five minutes to get to the lower falls, which is enormous and gorgeous. And you can even hike right to the base of the falls. You might get a little wet and muddy, but it's super cool. I even went down a secret little trail that takes you right to the top of the waterfall. Honestly, I've never hiked in the true Pacific Northwest before, and this is the greenest hike I have ever been on. Everything was mossy and just this deep, dark, emerald green. 
Like I said, there's quite a few other waterfalls along this highway. I wish I had time to go see them, but I crunched so much into these few days that I'm just gonna have to come back and do those hikes at a different time. I had to pull off and see Multnomah Falls though. It's a pretty iconic waterfall. It's 620 feet. There's a beautiful bridge in front of it. I didn't do the hike because it's just super packed and touristy there. I went around seven o'clock at night and even then it was still pretty busy, but not nearly as bad as if I went earlier in the day. The next day I just stuck around Cascade Locks and I didn't even get in my car once. I walked about five to 10 minutes over to the Sternwheeler and I took the 1215 cruise that goes west. It's one hour, it takes you under the Bridge of the Gods and over to the dam, and then it turns around. You can also stay on it and head east, and that would make it a two hour cruise, if you choose. That rhymed. Oh man. Then I took Rue and we walked over to Thunder Island Brewery. It's a really nice spot with a beautiful view of the gorge. Super dog friendly. Everybody loved Rue like always. <laughs> then we walked up to get a close up view of the Bridge of the Gods. You can walk on it as a pedestrian, but there is no designated walkway for pedestrians. <laughs> So the cars have to weave around you and I definitely wouldn't feel comfortable with that. After that, I just chilled at the campsite because it's right on the water, it's gorgeous, why not? And we walked over to Thunder Island. We found a beautiful sunset spot and got to watch the Sternwheeler go by. My last day, I took the bridge to cross over to Washington for the first time super exciting. We hiked to the top of Beacon Rock, which is a beautiful former core of a volcano. It's also a great climbing spot. The way the switchbacks were set up, I feel like it really wasn't that difficult of a hike. So don't let the hike to the top scare you. It's a gorgeous view at the top and totally worth it. After that, I headed over to Hood River, which is supposedly the windsurfing capital of the world. So of course I had to go watch the windsurfers and the kite surfers for a bit. I also checked out their downtown area, which is super cute. It has lots of tasting rooms, cute little gift shops and restaurants. But my favorite place I visited in Hood River was Mount Hood Winery. Not only was the wine delicious, but you get a gorgeous view of Mount Hood, which I wish I got to spend some time hiking in that area, but honestly, I just didn't have enough time. I did not realize that four nights would not be enough here. There is so much to do, it is insane. I drove a little bit farther east to the Dells and it's insane how much different of a climate it is there. One of the guys at the winery told me, every mile east you go of Portland, you lose an inch of rainfall per year or something like that. And it makes total sense because the farther east you go, it becomes like a high desert climate. It's super brown and totally different from where I'm currently staying, which is extremely green and very beautiful. So I am very glad I decided to stay in Cascade Locks. It's been an amazing, amazing stay. I wish I could stay longer. This place just doesn't even feel real. It feels like I died and went to heaven, I swear. <laughs> I am super sad to be leaving today, but also so excited for what's to come. I just spent a month and a half on the road and I was so nervous to be living full time in my Airstream, going from place to place, but I did it! I pulled it off and I feel like a total badass. I thought this experience would be more stressful, but honestly, the more I do this, the more practice I get, the more confidence I gain. It feels amazing traveling around with my home. I don't have to pack anything up. I can just pull up, set up camp, and then cook dinner in my kitchen because everything's right where I left it. 
I am so stoked about this lifestyle and can't wait for future adventures. You guys need to come to this area and check it out yourself because I am telling you, it is amazing. Anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.